This hands-on video is part of a video course called Understanding Docker and Docker Compose 100% hands-on. If you like this video, check out the link in the description below. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and give a thumbs up. Now, let's go. All right, if you liked our previous lecture, then you will love this one. And I would say we just get started with running multiple containers from the command line, again, step by step, I'm going to type in the command and I'm going to explain to you later what is meant by them. Okay, let me go to my first terminal here. I have two PowerShell windows open. On Mac, you can just open a terminal or actually two terminals and on Linux as well. And on Windows, we have the PowerShell. So I'm going to type in docker run again, dash it, dash d, dash dash rm, dash dash name, Linux one, and then Ubuntu slash bin slash bash. Let me run this and you see we get a long hash here. Okay, what is going on here? We are having a couple of more flags here. Dash D will detach from the container as soon as it started. So when we are not running dash T, then we are actually seeing the this Linux prompt here, but now we are back to the Windows prompt and our container is actually running in the background. You can see here it's running, it's up uh, and we are not attached to it, which is good if you want to have a couple of containers doing specific things like running an Apache or something. Uh, we actually don't want to be attached to it. Why, why would you want to be attached to an Apache if you just need it to be running in the background or specific other processes, which we're going to do in the next lectures. Okay. The next flag is rm, dash dash rm. Dash dash rm removes a container after stopping. Uh, if you remember back in the previous lecture, once we stopped the container, it was still uh, visible if we do docker ps dash a as a stopped container. And then we had to do docker rm and then the container ID. Now we don't have to do this anymore. If we are providing the dash dash rm flag, then we have a container which gets automatically removed as soon as it's stopped. And that's very convenient if you have these containers that only do a specific thing. And then if they stopped, then their thing, their purpose is over. Uh, we are going to see this in the right next lecture where we are going to use a container which only has a RAR, like the zip RAR to compress a file inside. You don't want to have this container anymore after you compress the file. No need to have this anymore. All right, then we have a name flag. And that is very good if you want to provide a name for your container yourself. As you remember back when you start a container without the name flag, then Docker will give the container its own name. Now this is a little bit inconvenient to look at if you want to break it down like this. Remember, we had uh, a very strange name before, and now we provide the name ourselves. It is Linux one. And then as before, we have the, oh, let me make this smaller again. We have the image that we want to start, and we have the process that we want to start inside of this image. And then when we detach from the container, then we just get a hash. Now, let me just run a second container with a different name, Linux two, very creative. And we see we get a different hash, first hash 6405 and so on, second hash 0974 and so on. Now, if you're doing a Docker PS, then we see both containers are up and running. All right. As you know, from before, we can attach to a container, we can either provide the container ID, or I can just say, uh, please attach to Linux one, and then we can see our file system in Linux one. Now, let me create a directory here I'm good here, and let's just call this my Linux one directory. If I do an LS, then I see, I can barely see it because it's blue and blue, but I can see my Linux one here. Let me go over to my second power shell over here or to your second terminal, if you're on Linux or on Mac and attach to the Linux two container and then do an LS. Now, if you probably guessed it already, but it is very important to highlight this, the 
contents of our second container is not the same as the contents of our first container, Linux one, because in our second container, we do not have the my Linux one directory, which we just created. It is still from the same image and it is still from every other image that the image is based on. It's called a union file system. And it is very important to understand that those file systems, as soon as you start them as a container are separated from each other. You cannot just access the files from one container in another container. This is both process isolation as well as file system isolation. All right, then let's just exit over here. Do a docker ps a and we see now our container, our Linux 2 is not available anymore, only the still running Linux 1 container. And let's go over to our first shell over here, type in exit docker ps a and everything is gone. There is nothing to clean up. That's it. All right. Again, in our lecture, we have attached an exercise where you can run this for yourself. So if you want to run through this, it is highly recommended just to get a feeling for it. If you already know it, obviously you don't have to run through that. And in the next lecture, we are talking about running Docker containers with a shared host file system, which is also known as Docker volumes. And that is one of the most important concepts for developers to actually install Docker. So it gets really interesting now. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next lecture.